This game villain's self-saving system. Chapter 72 The Person Named Shen Ju. Audio Source Wusha World Audiobook.com Chapter 72 The Person Named Shen Ju. Luo Binger said, You're not afraid of me anymore. Not of the one outside, but the one in here. Yes. Luo Binger raised a hand towards him. Come here. If this was the original Luo Binger after being blackened, no matter how he beckoned him, Shen Xing Chu definitely would have been so afraid that he would have just obediently gone over. But Shen Xing Chu still had the courage to fight to the death. However, the moment he turned around, that black-robed figure appeared in front of him, blocking his path. Shen Ching Chu was only a scant few inches away from knocking into him. Shen Ching Chu violently backpedaled and narrowly avoided tripping. Luo Binger reached out two fingers, tugging on his sleeve and pulling him back. He said gently, Why are you running? Facing this face, right now Shen Ching Chu couldn't even hit him, nor could he be completely afraid of him. He still didn't give up and continued to knock on the system. This is really the original Luo Binger, right? It's not this world's Luo Binger. What should I do to get through the punishment? Do I have to beat him? This isn't much different from you just sending me back to my original world, is it? The system, hello, while the punishment program is running. Shen Ching Chu closed the dialogue box. Luo Binger stared at his face for a while before he frowned and said, I keep feeling as if it seems like there's something different about you. You're really Shen Ching Chu. Shen Ching Chu blinked, maintain his vigilance. Luo Binger gazed at his face, looking a little perplexed before he slowly reached out and held Shen Ching Chu's right hand. His palm was the same as always, dry yet ice cold. Shen Ching Chu's heart was slightly moved, and he was about to say something when his right shoulder suddenly went cold. In that instant, Shen Ching Chu didn't actually feel the sensation of his right arm leaving his shoulder. He only saw something fly away as half of his body grew light before he had time to react. Up until a monstrous, enormous pain suddenly washed through his entire body and brain. Luo Binger just completely ripped off his right arm. Upon receiving the heavy injury, Shen Ching Chu's body backlashed with a wave of spiritual energy all on its own. Luo Binger struck him, and the energy immediately broke and scattered. There was no way to stop the blood gushing out. Shen Ching Chu's vision blurred, and he might have heard someone screaming, but he also might not have. His ears were ringing too sharply, and he couldn't understand. He only wanted to quickly escape from this person in front of him. He stumbled backward. After just a few steps, he tripped over the remnants of some charred bamboo, and he toppled, face up, onto the ground. The pain from losing an arm was too terrible, to the point that it even overwhelmed the feeling of his head smashing onto the ground. Luo Binger calmly followed him. This time, he lightly stroked one of Shen Ching Chu's calves. Human stick. Right now, Luo Binger was planning on making him into a human stick. It hurt so much that it was hard to breathe. Shen Ching Chu used his reaming arm to grab onto Luo Binger, shaking his head wildly as he gasped for air. Don't. Don't. Don't use that face to do something like this. Luo Binger used one hand to firmly restrain Shen Ching Chu on the ground. His gaze could nearly be described as sincere and affectionate. He said gently, It's not as if this is my first time doing something like this. How is Shazun the still so unaccustomed to it? Then, let's do it a few more times until you slowly get used to it. How about that? In a heartbeat, a gut-wrenching agony spread rapidly from the base of his left leg throughout his entire body. Shen Ching Chu couldn't bear it any longer, and he let out a blood-curdling scream. Suddenly, the system's monotonous voice issued a notice the punishment has finished. 
The pain abruptly vanished, and Shen Xing Chu violently turned over and stood up before immediately collapsing onto his knees again. He didn't even have the energy to curse the system and slap it in the face as he half knelt on the ground, watching his drops of cold sweat land in bursts, dazed. A voice suddenly spoke from the side. What happened to you? Only then did he notice that he wasn't the only one here. In addition, it seemed as if he hadn't been pulled back to reality yet. This was still the dreamscape. This cave also seemed a little familiar. It looked like the same cave that the dream demon hid in when he appeared as a black mist that first time Shen Xing Chu entered the dream all those years ago. The one next to him was precisely the dream demon. Shen Xing Chu forcefully calmed himself down and asked in reply, Why am I here at your place? The dream demon said, You entered an extremely powerful dreamscape, and it seemed like your primordial spirit was in danger of ripping apart. I wanted to intervene the entire time, but I couldn't. I tried many times before I suddenly succeed just then, and along the way, I pulled you into the formation over here. Before, he had the impression that the dream demon didn't really like him, but unexpectedly, when the dream demon saw that the situation wasn't good, he ended up pulling Shen Xing Chu out. Along the way, Shen Xing Chu felt slightly surprised, and he said sincerely, Many thanks, Elder. You've helped me greatly. The dream demon snorted. No need to thank me. I'm just astonished that last time in the Holy Mausoleum, you actually managed to hang on until that brat woke up. You helped him quite a bit, too. Helping him means helping this old man. That kind of agony from having an arm completely ripped off was already deeply embedded into Shen Xing Chu's mind, and it was triggered any time that face floated up in his brain. Shen Xing Chu couldn't help but grip his right shoulder with his left hand. He had to take in several breaths of air before he could say that name without his voice trembling. Why don't I see Luo Binga? Usually, the one who tried the hardest and liked pulling him into dreams the most should be Luo Binga. Basically every time Shen Qing Chu fell asleep, Luo Binga would come over to disturb him. But this time, the dream demon actually beat Luo Binga to it and pulled Shen Qing Chu into the formation first. The dream demon grew depressed just thinking about it. How would I know? Ever since the brat learned how to control my nightmare technique, I couldn't enter his dreamscape ever again. In this world, only he dreams what he wishes to. I can't do anything about it. If Shen Qing Chu couldn't see the adorable Luo Binga as fast as possible, he felt as if his limbs would continue to hurt the instant he recalled that name. Could the young man who was a pure and the innocent little white flower quickly come out and feed him a tranquilizer? The dream demon shot a glance at him. When he saw that Shen Qing Chu's expression was ashen, his lips pale, the dream demon's face grew serious. That brat will come to find you on his own. Why are you worrying? Before, weren't you doing your best to avoid him? Could this count as consolation? As Shen Xing Chu looked at the dream demon, who was feigning disdain, he suddenly felt that this old man was a little cute. He relaxed and sat on the ground. After a pause, Shen Xing Chu suddenly remembered something. Elder Dream Demon, when I was in the Holy Mausoleum before, I carried Luo Binger East. On the way there, I met two people. One of them was a woman. Did you? Back then, Chu Hai Tang had lost consciousness for a little. When she woke, she went crazy for no reason at all and ran away. Shen Qing Chu suspected greatly that when she was unconscious, she encountered something in the dreamscape. At that time, Luo Binger was also unconscious, his head burning like coal, so of course, he didn't have time to invade Chu Hai Tang's dreamscape. In that case, the most likely possibility was that the dream demon did something. As expected, the dream demon twirled his beard and said, Just a little trick I did, that's all. Even though he called it 
a little trick, and pretend to be indifferent. He couldn't conceal the arrogant tone to his voice. Shen Ching Chu couldn't resist asking, What exactly did you show her? Generally speaking, if the dream demon wanted to destroy somebody's mind, he would show her her own darkest and most painful memories. Could it be that the dream demon pulled out her memories of the Chu clan being wiped out? No, that wasn't right either. If that was the case, Chu Haitang shouldn't have reacted the way she had the moment she opened her eyes and saw Shen Ching Chu. She should have overflowed with hatred and struck out with her sword instead, trying to stab several hundred and holes in him. Why would she cry and scream before turning and running? The dream demon, what I showed her wasn't her memories. It was yours. Shen Ching Chu understood instantly. It was the bits and pieces of Shen Ju's memories that were still remembering in his body. He had always cared a lot about what airplane shooting towards the sky mentioned before, concerning the portion of the original Shen Ching Chu that he hadn't written down. Shen Ching Chu immediately said, Could Elder please pull it out and show it to me? The dream demon looked at him, but he didn't ask why Shen Ching Chu wanted someone else to pull out his own memories for him to see. He only asked, You don't remember them anymore? Shen Ching Chu prepared to toss out some excuse about how his memories were damaged when he had a chi deviation in order to avoid the question. He nodded. Correct. It had to be said that the probability of having one's memories damaged from qi deviation was still fairly low. But the dream demon didn't actually pursue the topic. Instead, he said, It's better not to remember some things. Shen Ching Chu said, I earnestly request Elder's help. The dream demon, you really want to see it? Shen Ching Chu nodded his head. The dream demon reached out a finger and pressed it against Shen Ching Chu's forehead. Close your eyes. Open them only when I let go. Shen Ching Chu obeyed and closed his eyes. The dream demon spoke again. Your memories are badly damaged and are not complete. They skip over parts and aren't continuous. You might also see people whose faces are blurry. This is caused by your own body. There's no need to pay attention to it. What he meant to say was that if there was a bug, it was a problem with your body's source file, not my technique. Shen Ching Chu counted to ten in his mind, and when the pressure against his forehead disappeared, he opened his eyes. A thin young man with disheveled hair was kneeling on the ground in front of him, his upper body bound by hemp rope. This young man's face was pale, his chin sharp and his features pretty. But his face carried an irremovable sense of gloominess, and there were purple sections at the corners of his mouth and forehead. It was Shen Ju when he was still young. At Huayu City, when Shen Ching Chu escaped from Luo Bing as dreamscape formation, he inadvertently landed in the remnants of Shen Ju's memories. What he saw was precisely this scene. With a glance around, he discovered that, sure enough, what he saw during his hasty glimpse back then wasn't wrong. This was a spacious room with a library and a bedroom linked together, separated only by a hardwood moon gate door. It was furnished lavishly, and exquisite calligraphy and paintings hung on the walls. It was impossible for a family that wasn't rich to obtain these, so this couldn't be the lair of some human traffickers. Shen Ching Chu crossed his arms and leaned against a nearby shelf that had many treasure slots on it, waiting quietly. The wooden door carved with flowers and plants in front of him opened soundlessly. Shen Ju's head remained rigid and he didn't move, but his eyes swept upwards as the newcomer's figure reflected in his irises. A young man with luxurious clothing stepped over the threshold. When Shen Ching Chu saw that face of his, which looked 60% like Chu Haitang's, he knew that this had to be the eldest member from the Chu clan extermination, Chu Haitang's older brother. What he had suspected before was correct. No matter what, the days that Shen Ju spent in the Chu family wasn't like what Chu Hai Tang said, nor had he been. 
treated like family. The youth strolled leisurely over to Shen Ju and circled half around him. Shen Ju's face was tightly drawn, his lips pressed together. Even though his expression was dark, his shoulders trembled slightly. He was clearly extremely afraid, but he was forcing himself to remain calm. Suddenly, young Master Chu kicked him square in the back. Shen Ju immediately sprawled onto the ground face first. Young Master Chu chuckled coldly. What, you don't dare to hit back this time? Shen Ju landed with a nose full of blood and dust. He said lowly, Spare me, young master. I didn't know that was you. Young master Chu said, You didn't know, you didn't know, and you still dared to provoke me. He slapped Shen Ju onto the ground with one hand, and Shen Ju's head made the muffled noise when it slammed against the floor as two streams of blood flow down his chin. Young Master Chu seemed to derive immense pleasure from doing this, and he took great joy in slapping him like playing with a ball. Shen Ching Chu continued to watch from the side, maintain his silence. This happened over a dozen times before Shen Ju finally couldn't bear it any longer and he shouted, What exactly do you want to do? Young Master Chu laughed maliciously. You belong to our family now. Naturally, I can do whatever I want. Suddenly, a gentle and beautiful voice belonging to a young woman sounded from outside the door. Brother, brother, are you inside? The moment young Master Chu heard his little sister calling for him, his expression changed, and he unbound Shen Ju before he threatened him softly. Wipe your face. If you dare to say anything wrong, I'll kill you. Shen Ju was both afraid and resentful. A fierce glint flashed through his eyes, but he didn't dare to say anything, despite his rage. He viciously wiped his face, rubbing away the dust and the blood from his nose, but the more he wiped, the dirtier it became. When young Master Chu saw this, he picked up a flower vase from the window and splashed the water inside onto Shen Ju's face. Young Master Chu changed his expression before opening the door, beaming. Why did Tang Er come over? Shen Ching Chu finally knew how the original Shen Ching Chu's fawning on the surface but spiteful behind people's backs character developed. It was most likely acquired and influenced by young Master Chu. Chu Hai Tang wore an embroidered lilac robe and a pair of small white satin boots. The tips were embellished with jewels, and she was truly a delicate young mistress born from a flower bud. It was a different kind of beauty compared to her later allure, which was tempered through hardship. She stepped in through the door and giggled. I heard that brother bought somebody, and I came over to take a look. She saw a teenager shrunk in the corner, his head hanging low. But his face was quite delicate and pretty, and her eyes lit up. She walked over before she said, all smiles. You're C.O. Ju, then. Shen Ju's face was already wiped clean, but he still looked quite unhappy, and he didn't answer her. Young Master Chu stood behind his sister, his eyes threatening. He laughed and said, he doesn't really like to speak. His personality is quite strange. Chu Hai Tang took Shen Ju's hand and said, why don't you like to speak? Talk to me a little, please. Her voice was soft and coaxing, her tone intimate, her attitude innocent and pure. WashaWorldAudio.com Nobody could have the heart to embarrass her. Shen Ching Chu thought, when Chu Hai Tang was a young woman, she was truly a bit similar to Ning Ying Ying. It turned out that the original Shen Ching Chu had always liked this type. At first, Shen Ju's face was stiff, but he still couldn't hold out against a young maiden's gentle cajoling. His expression was one of silent enduring, and he turned his head, his ears slightly red. When Chu Hai Tang saw this, she clapped and said, Brother, he's so much fun. No wonder you bought him even though you never liked to bring in people from outside. I kind of like him. Young Master Chu smiled fakely. I also quite like him. When Shen Ju heard the word, 
Like, he couldn't help but shudder. At this point in the memories, the entire scene suddenly darkened. The people present all swiftly vanished. Shen Ching Chu started before he immediately understood that the dream demon's so-called rupture had occurred. Since the memories that the original Shen Ching Chu left in his body weren't complete, the ruptures would happen extremely frequently. The previous memory had already ended, and now another one began. The scene was still set in that room. This time, Shen Ju wasn't bound, and he was lying on the ground with a swollen face as he picked viciously at the woolen rug on the floor to the point that his fingers were blood-stained. Abruptly, two light knocks came from the door. A young man's lowered voice came from outside. Seo Ju, Seo Ju. The moment Shen Ju heard this voice, he suddenly moved and threw himself against the door. He pressed his face against the lock and said, Seventh bro. The young man outside said, Quiet down, I snuck inside. At first, Shen Ching Chu couldn't tell you who the person outside was. When he thought about it again, he realized that the reason Shen Ju had the character for nine in his name was because he was ranked ninth in the hands of the human traffickers. Naturally, there would be a one through eight as well. However, Shen Ching Chu was truly a little astonished that Shen Ju actually had a good friend with his kind of personality. Rattling noises came from the door as if the person outside was shaking it. Shen Ju said, It's useless. There are five or six locks on the inside and outside. The window is also locked. The youth said worriedly, They didn't do anything much to you this time when the escape didn't succeed, did they? Shen Ju's temper suddenly surged up, and he cursed. They didn't do anything much to me. Are you stupid? They've locked me in here for two days already and broke both my legs. What do you think? In reality, Shen Ching Chu could see clearly that though Shen Ju had suffered a beating and he couldn't walk, both of his legs were still fine. They were hardly broken. But the young man couldn't see the circumstances on the other side of the door, and he seemed to believe Shen Ju. He said with guilt, It's all my fault. Shen Ju said angrily, Of course it's all your fault. I blame you. We weren't close with those newcomers, so what if we were stepped on a little? Why did you have to play hero? Are you afraid that people like us with such lowly lives can't bear it? If you hadn't played hero, why would I have helped you? If I hadn't helped you, how would I have provoked him, and how would that Chu guy have ended up buying me? If he hadn't bought me, how would I have became like this? Every two days I get beat up a little bit and every three days I get beat up a lot he plays me like I'm a dog. The young man repeated, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Sure enough, with Shen Ju's personality, if he had friends, they definitely had to have incredibly good tempers. After several continuous apologies, Shen Ju finally forcefully dispelled his anger and said, Whatever. I've never valued that damn thing called loyalty. I'll give all my loyalty for this life to you. The young man said gratefully. I know. Shen Ju said viciously. What the hell do you know? The youth said, I really know. Seventh bro will remember your loyalty. I will definitely repay it to you in the future. Shen Ju spat. What future? For people like you who are in the possession of human traffickers for your entire life, in the future, your fate will also be to become a human trafficker. No, you're a good person, so you can't be a human trafficker. At the most, you'll just continue to beg for food. The youth said, Co Ju, I came to talk to you about that. I'm going to leave. I came today to say goodbye to you. Shen Ju was startled, and he immediately sat up. Leave. Where are you going? The young man called Seventh Bro said. I can't stay here anymore. The Chu family has a lot of influence and wealth in the city. We can't possibly beat them, nor can we escape from them. There are so many cultivating sects in this world. 
I'm going to join one and learn how to cultivate so I can come back and rescue you. Shen Zhu's eyes suddenly lit up with a brilliant radiance. Seventh bro, I heard there's an immortal mountain to the east that recruits disciples who are exceptionally talented each year. Are you going there? The youth answered. I don't know, but I'll go give them all a try. There has to be one sect that will take me. Shen Zhu murmured. If I weren't locked in here, I could also go with you. Quote. He couldn't help but show the envy on his face as he pushed against the door, looking as if he was about to put some sinister plot in motion. Shen Ching Chu couldn't resist worrying slightly for the person outside. After a while, Shen Zhu sighed again and said, Seventh bro, from now on, you must not be so impulsive anymore. It ruins things every time. This time, I just got unlucky, but if you're still like this later when you join the cultivator's sect, what will you do then? Be calmer. Shen Ching Chu inexplicably found it a little comical that Shen Zhu was so young, yet he was still lecturing someone older than him. But the young man wasn't the least bit unhappy. Instead, he said, ashamed. I'll bear it in mind. Because he had hope now, Shen Zhu's voice grew passionate. Hey, you have to remember what you said before. You must come back and save me. Seventh bro seemed to be earnestly nodding his head, and he said heavily. Okay, wait a little, until I learn it all. I'll definitely come back and take you away. The two of them stayed silent for a while, separated by a door. Shen Zhu asked. Did you leave? The youth hastily replied. Not yet. I was waiting for you to speak. Shen Ju said. Seventh bro, come closer. Let me take a look at you through the crack in the door. I don't know whether you will. How many years will pass before I can see you again? The young man laughed and said. You wanted to say you don't know whether I'll die outside, right? Okay. Shen Ju spat and said. You said that yourself. Don't blame me for saying something cruel. He shifted closer to the door with difficulty and moved his face close to the crack in the door. Dot. Shen Ching Chu was extremely curious as well, and he also moved closer. He passed through the extremely tiny crack in the door and looked outside. End chapter.